So Bruce, we were talking before about vastly different rates of rejection of kidney transplants and others in different places. You said in Europe it's way lower than in the United States in particular. How, how big are the differences? It's fairly marked. And you know, we've, we've ascribed it to socioeconomic differences that we feel, or to homogeneity of the population. So if people get proper government coverage for their medicines, they take their medicines, more likely? And that's one thought, that's one thought. And, and the other is there's more genetic similarity? More genetic similarity, and, and we're learning that, that the, the ability of what self and non-self is with organs is far more complex than we, our original paradigm. So that's a decision the immune system has to make every moment. Every moment it has to decide two things, I think, really. It has to decide self, non-self, and threat, non-threat. So does the immune system recognize some substances or antigens as non-self but don't worry about it? Uh, all the time. Really? We live with bacteria, we live with viruses, and we know through clonal deletion and early on in life that when we process some antigens... So what's antigens, a clonal deletion early on in so life? So early on in life, in the classic sense, it's far more complex than that, but the thymus, mm -hmm. the master gland, uh, that, that kind of cooks up our T cells, mm -hmm which are our first effector arm of our so-called adaptive immune system, mm -hmm. looks at certain T cells in context of that antigen and says, nothing bad has happened. We'll delete this clone of T cells against that antigen. So how does the thymus know which lines of cells to get rid of and which ones to allow to continue? Well, I think at a very young age that we, the fact that we're alive, that probably there's far more complexity than I'm giving to it, that there's a lot of crosstalk. I'm alive and I'm a well, mm -hmm. and this antigen is here. And therefore, activating the immune system, which hurts you, you know, you, to get rid of an antigen, you have to cause inflammation and then injury often, uh -huh. that there's no sense in that because I'm healthy and okay with this antigen around. So I remember in medical school learning about inflammation and being surprised, oh my gosh, it's useful. I, I always thought the you know, pain and the swelling and, then, and, and the fever that they were bad, but no, 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 they're all part of a useful system. Uh, well, all clearly, we, if we want to rid ourselves of a perceived threat, one of the first ways we do is we activate a system that allows us to isolate the antigen and then have a compartment that allows a attack on the antigen that's not an attack on the whole body. So we'll go back in a minute to autoimmune disorders, but wrapping up this part, Really, you're emphasizing that we can't understand it fully just by looking at the mechanisms. We have to think about what it's all for. I think that's the only way we can do that because we do know that they're negative signals, they're positive signals. But the positive signals can become negative depending on the context. So let's talk about what you mean by positive and negative for a second. So I'll, I'll do classic. So a cytotoxic lymphocyte is defined as a CD8 cell with perfin and granzyme. And that's thought to so be... So I, I didn't follow much of that in our audience won't either. So we have killer T cells. Killer T cells. So we have killer T cells that are defined by certain molecules and co-determinants, okay. uh, receptors. And we also have T cells that quell the immune system, or T suppressor cells. Okay. And it's the balance of that that determines the immune response. However, the same molecules that define a T killer cell can, be, uh, can also suppress under the right conditions. This is fascinating, and you and I were talking a little bit before about some new super drug that essentially knocks out everything in the immune system, which you would expect would immediately lead people to die from infections, but infections are not the only problem that results. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's an old drug that's but been the, used in leukemia. They also get autoimmune disorders. But they develop autoimmunity uh, long term. I think it's so fascinating. If you, if you essentially take an AK-47 to the immune system and all the parts in it, it's not just that you get overwhelmed by bacteria and viruses, it's also that your system you're, you're, isn't inhibited enough. You're knocking out your negative signals you're, as well. Right. And we need those negative signals. I often will, will give the analogy, if we cut our finger we get red, we get inflammation, we don't have to do a thing, but in two or three weeks that goes away. We didn't do anything. So the amazing. immune system rec And it stops the inflammation after it a while. It stops it. And we know that. We know that the best way to get a T suppressor cell, a suppressor response, is first to have a killer response. 
So the killer response arouses the suppressor response. It has to, otherwise it would go, because it's an off-regulatory system. And it would never stop. I think we need to talk about the microbiome. Let's go on to that in a second.